Greetings everyone, Nick DiVirgilio here at the home office, the headquarters of PMC Speakers in Biggleswade, England. I'm gonna hang out with Ollie Thomas, son of founder Peter Thomas, and we're gonna talk all things PMC, the history of the company, how they make their speakers, and where PMC is going today. We have a great relationship with PMC at Sweetwater, so let's get to it. So Ollie, thank you so much for having me to this really cool old home where your PMC's based. It's really cool hanging with you. Uh, tell us, if you can, in a you know in a compact sort of way, the history of you yourself and this company. Your dad's been you know, started the company, but you've kind of brought yourself into it. And uh, tell us your story. Well, uh, okay. First of all, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to uh, the the madhouse yeah. of audio that is PMC. Um, and it is like, a, you know, we're a small, medium-sized business now. Um, and it is, it's still a family business. It's sure. family run, it's dad's business. And, um, but everyone that works here, you know, it feels like a family that we come to work with, a, a bunch of uh, people that are just passionate about audio. Um, so my history was, uh, I started out sort of uh, higher education and work life, um, in the automotive and motorsport industry. Mm -hmm. And I went and studied uh, sort of courses relevant to that at university. My background is more of like a mechanical engineer. Um, and I, I worked in the industry for a while before realizing that it, it, it wasn't for me. It didn't feel right. right. And kind of at that point in time where I was feeling like, oh, what am I doing? It's not the right industry. I, uh, I was working part-time here doing some R&D work. Um, the foot in the door being that it was dad's business. Right. So uh, I did that for a bit and I realized that the R&D work that I was doing was like true R&D. There are things about acoustics and audio that just are not well understood. And so it was brilliant. We were literally learning new things each day and things that sort of, you know, there, there weren't any textbooks or any education that I could teach you. So that was exciting. The products that were being designed were these fantastic high-end speakers, the best speakers in the world. Um, and also the people in the audio industry, everyone that works in it from, um, you know, end user customers, hi-fi customers who are so passionate about audio to mix engineers and professional customers alike. Mm -hmm. um, just like quirky personalities and characters which, um, yeah, which just fascinated me and it felt, it felt right, it felt like home. Did you feel like following in your father's footsteps? Absolutely As a kid? Not. No, you didn't want to do that. <laughs> no, no, it didn't, it didn't really dawn on me. But I mean, you know, PMC started in our back garden, right. at, uh, the, the bottom of the garden at my childhood home in, in London. And, you know, so for the first few years of my life, I grew up around speakers in pieces throughout the house, either being torn down to be studied or developed, or, you know, sometimes some new speakers being built in the back of the house. So. I probably built some of the, the first speakers as right. like sort of four-year-old child labor right. with a screwdriver in hand. But no, I never thought that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I, I was never sort of coerced into this by dad in any way, shape or form. He's, it, it was there and available as and when right. uh, it, it got my interest. Your dad's story is really cool, how he sort of fell into the job at, at, B, at the BBC and uh, kind of worked his way up the ranks and then through his job, and tell me if I'm getting any of this wrong, through his job there, started helping design better products for the BBC to use. So yeah, I mean, he was at the BBC for a long time and did a lot of his training, which you know, he, he uses as you know, his catalog of audio knowledge, right. of everything about audio quality from uh, how to record all the way through to um, the R and D and sort of you know, speaker specification side of it, and that was that was what he was involved with was that R and D side of things for the BBC, where they were trying to push their own understanding of acoustics and and, and reproduced sound, um, and they would often you know give feedback to other speaker manufacturers about how to make their products better because you know they just wanted to record and broadcast things to the highest quality they could, so that was his role um, alongside managing. Um, outside broadcast studios, um, so very involved in all elements of the, the you know the sort of pro audio recording chain. Um, it was at some point, I don't know when, 
uh, him and his business partner, Adrian Loder, who was a, a good friend of his, and they were both passionate audiophiles. Right. Um, they got to a point where I think they just jointly decided at the same point in time that, hey, look, we, we've had access to all of the world's leading speakers, and we just feel we can do something better. They had some ideas of some key technologies that they could uh, borrow inspiration from, from other brands, and, and put them all together and de develop something which, which was better. So, like, and Dad will jokingly say, like, quite arrogantly, they said, okay, right, we quit. Let's go do it. Um, and I don't, think, I don't think the first or the second or the third or the fourth prototype worked very well, but they, they eventually got there, and, and the first um, speaker that they made, they sold back into the BBC. Right. Um, and, then, and then many, many more, and it kind of spiraled from there. That's a great story, and obviously the product speaks for itself. It's, it sounds amazing. And the way it's tying into Sweetwater is really cool now because um, our Studio B is now a PMC Atmos room, and the room sounds amazing. And so many of our customers, customers who come through Sweetwater, they knew we had recording studios, and they've always been cool rooms for sure, but now that they can walk in and get this sort of immersive experience, mix their, their recordings in Atmos as well, right there on the premises, and then hear the amazing sound that is PMC. It's just all a cool story, how it's kind of come full circle, especially for our customers over there. Yeah, no, I imagine. Um, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's amazing to think of where we've come from and where we are now. Right. As a uh, you know, much larger international company selling products into 30 or so countries uh, around the world. And yeah, I mean, like the, the latest range of professional products that we've developed um, has just been you know, the, the best journey, a long journey, but a fantastic journey, culminating all of the 31 years of experience we have sure. in business, designing speakers, all into you know, a fantastic range of products, which, right. um, yeah, I mean, delighted particularly that Sweetwater have, have picked them up and run with them and, and see, see all the benefits of them. For sure. I think we've run, we've run gone full on with PMC right now. We're pretty well invested, and I think it's totally a great decision because uh, it sounds great in our room. A Russ Berger designed room, but with your speakers in there, it's just the acoustics are perfect and the speakers just really come to life in that room. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as ever, like the acoustics of the room are as important as the speakers sure. themselves. And as you kind of raise that bar of like resolution and detail, everything around it in the signal chain as yeah. well as the room has got to kind of like come up with it. But the end result, I imagine, is yeah, amazing. Well, it's amazing. At Sweetwater, we're thinking of how we're recording bands and artists now in our studio. So we'll be in Studio A, nice big room, tall ceiling, sounds great through our Neve and all that kind of stuff. But now we're thinking of, well, where do you place the microphones? Yeah. And thinking of Atmos as the end result. And the fact that we can kind of go back and forth just between rooms that are all tied together is really cool and super convenient. Yep. And it's just, it's a, it's a different way of thinking about how you're recording your music. It is totally, yeah. It's a it's a brand new way of thinking, yeah. and it, it, there's lots more options that can be opened up. Or you can go for a very traditional kind of sure, recording. yeah, and go whatever you need, right? Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I love the history of the company and the brand, and uh, the sound is amazing, of course. So, why don't we uh, leave this beautiful room and go see how some of the magic is done? Okay, that sounds good. All right, let's go. So, Ollie, tell me a little bit about what's going on here. You were explaining to, this to me earlier, and I've never really seen inside of a speaker quite like this. So, what's happening here? Yeah, I mean, I liked your question earlier, which was like, well, how far back inside the cabinet does the drive unit go? You know, what else is going on inside there? Sure. And that's why we produce these uh, cutaway models of our speakers. This is a cutaway of the CI-140. Um, so that we can see what is going on inside the cabinet. Sure. So unlike more traditional sealed box or potted box, uh, reflex box designs, uh, all of PMC speakers are transmission lines. Um, and more specifically, they're what we call an advanced transmission line, which is our iteration and development of a transmission line theory. Um, so what that is, is kind of two different things. Inside the box, there is a, a folded tunnel lined with uh, acoustic damping materials, which uh, it absorbs and draws away like the mid-range frequencies that are radiated from the rear of the, the woofer cones. Okay. Um, so that uh, damps and absorbs that away 
uh, so that that energy isn't reflected back through that cone, which basically creates like a mid-rangey distortion. So it makes them a uh, much lower distortion in the mid-range, and so sonically it's much cleaner. You can hear all of the, those details in like, in like voices, like that kind of lower mid-range frequency band uh, coming through so much cleaner. What it also does is it takes the rear-radiated rear energy off of the back of the woofer cone. Um, and we use that to resonate a quarter wave uh, resonant frequency pipe, which is defined by the length of the pipe or the tunnel. Um, and we use that to boost the low frequencies, which are then emitted from the vent, the terminus of the transmission line. So in this cabinet, we've obviously got four, four woofers, which are all driven in parallel. So they're all doing the base, the lower frequencies from 400 hertz down. Um, and the cabinet is kind of divided up into two and then into four. So it's a symmetrical cabinet layout. The beginning of the line, if you like, is behind the drive units here with the start being up here. And the, the shape of it is kind of like you can see the tunnel here from start to exit. Um, you can see from this panel across here that there's a taper in the lines. You know, it's like uh, closer there and then there's a larger gap there. Um, and this taper also helps define how well it absorbs the upper frequencies. Um, as well as uh, sort of where, the, where the lowest frequencies uh, will be tuned to for the line. All right, so welcome to the uh, Atmos home cinema room. A nice demonstration space that we have for showing off um, a, a range of our products uh, in a home theater environment. So what we've got in here hidden behind the fabric walls, um, which give it the sort of clean home cinema uh, look is uh, across the front for the LCR is three CI 140s um, and then down the s uh, sides and the rear on each side we have uh, four CI 65s the same as uh, what I used for the surrounds in the Sweetwater demo room um, and then overheads we've got six CI 30s which are the much uh, smaller model in the CI range and they're perfect for tucking into the cinema so lots of speakers and it gives uh, a real immersive audio playback like basically we can print anything which fits inside this grid. So you can print a whole speaker. <laughs> so that is a 3D printed speaker. And that's the kind of, sort of resolution that we get. But for a, uh, for a large part, like a cabinet like this, it's perfect. You can prototype um, very complex shapes very quickly. And that's what's so good about it, is if we wanted to construct a cabinet from wooden panels, which of course is a little bit more like a first or second prototype, um, you know, we're talking days or weeks rather than hours. It's so quick and simple. And there are certain shapes um, which, you know, we can, we can print to test out like waveguides, um, which otherwise, you know, this would be sort of sculpted from sort of uh, plasticine or something like that. So that's far more accurate and faster to try all different ideas. It just allows, I think, the engineers to be more creative and innovative. Yeah, so welcome into R&D. We've got a couple of different test rooms that we use as, as kind of multi-purpose rooms where we can set up uh, speakers or any audio equipment and they are, the acoustics are controlled in there mm -hmm. so that we can listen to things um, accurately um, and, and also take some measurements as we go. It's kind of like a measurement and listening iterative process and to have like a well-treated room is, uh, is really the key for success there. Okay. So that's what this room is through in here. I'm going to moonwalk backwards in here. Um, so yeah, you know, you get an idea of the acoustics around the room, which is you know, all of these different strange shaped materials and everything, sure. which is all about controlling the sound and acoustic uh, in a very evenly way across the room. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, we can set up a pair of speakers wherever we like. Um, we normally got some markers on the floor of the optimal listening spots, um, but we know that we can very consistently listen to uh, a couple of test tracks, make a small adjustment, maybe change a drive unit or tweak something, measure and re-listen, and that's kind of the, uh, the R&D process. So this is our, uh, um, I'm going to call it mini-size semi-anechoic. Um, so all of the foam on the walls uh, is, is uh, all there with the purpose of absorbing the, uh, what would be reflected sound from a uh, speaker under test in here. Um, and the, the, the benefit of that is that the microphone that we then place in front of the speaker to measure either a frequency response or a distortion, you're measuring the direct radiated sound from the speaker, 
rather than uh, any of the reflected sound as well. So we get a really accurate, true understanding of what's happening. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really dry sound. I mean, there's nothing going on in here at all. Yeah. And uh, do you test speakers at a, a really high volume or both, some really quietly, all around? Um, in here? Yeah, yeah well, we will measure at both a low level and a high level so that we can see if there is any change, if there is any power compression. Right. Um, but then, yeah, also we'll do sort of like power handling tests on our speakers, which we tend to do in a different room, which is uh, more designed around isolating sound from escaping because it's really loud. Okay. Well, all right, I'm hanging out with Tom Loader here. He's the operations director at PMC, and we're at one of the factories. This isn't the only factory where you build stuff. It's one of them, right? That's right, yeah. So we've got, yeah, we've got two, two main sites for production, yeah. But they're building speakers just behind us, and Tom's going to take us around and show us some of the magic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, come with me, and I'll show you around. All right. Okay. So, I mean, uh, this, is, this is our kind of secondary facility, so it's like... Um, I, I, I always, I always panic, uh, say to people, we've got, we've got two main facilities. We've got the one in Luton, where we have our two thirds of our production and our raw materials. And then here in Sandy, we've got the other third of production and, and a lot of finished goods stock. So all the finished goods and exports that go out to um, globally, you know, uh, to the US. Sweetwater gets our stuff from here. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So all the boxes that Sweetwater will receive that we send out to PMC USA, that you guys get, they'll be shipped from this facility. Okay. So it all gets channeled through here and out to our customers, yeah, worldwide and in the UK as well. Okay. So, but we do have production here as well, as you can see. So we've got a kind of like a mini production floor that we that we have here. That's kind of like a, it's a, it's basically a, a mini version of what we have down at Luton. So everything we do here, we do at Luton. We don't do um, like uh, some stuff at Luton and a little bit up here. We try and make sure that the guys up here are building exactly the same stuff and can build the same stuff as the guys down at Luton as well. So it's all about kind of like making sure you've got that flexibility when you're building stuff. Um, especially at the moment where you're super busy and you know, if something comes along and you get a big order hit, like you guys fed up and go, oh, we need, you know, another 20 pairs of PMC 6s. We can get anyone in production on it straight away. And, and make sure we meet as you know all customer demands as quickly as possible. So this is what you'll see. A lot of loudspeaker manufacturers, you'll see this. It's pretty straightforward, really. Um, there's no robots or really clever, you know, kind of like machines involved. It's all hand assembled, hand built by people, and that's really important because when we're building a speaker, um, you've got to. It's all the devil's in the detail, you know, when it comes to aesthetics and of course when you're testing something as well and you can't beat you know, these and, and these as well. So it's really, really important that everything that we built is built by you know, our guys and they're, they're trained up and they've got, you know, they're, you know, they really know what they're doing. They've got great eye for detail. Um, so, so yeah, we build everything on these production benches. So, I mean, um, it doesn't matter whether you're building a passive speaker for, for, for use in the home, or if you're building something like a PMC6 that we're building here, or a CI speaker, they all follow pretty much the same kind of principles in terms of assembly. Um, the guys will receive a, a kit of parts um, that they'll check, um, and you know they'll so we'll take all those parts, they'll make sure they've got the right quantities and they're, they're, they're all made to the right quality and they look right and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they'll get them out. And, and they'll assemble. So I always uh, liken it to a, like a car assembly plant. So this is kind of like, this is like the final assembly here. So we do, we're taking all those constituent parts, the drive units, the cabinet, the all important electronics, um, and you know, nuts and bolts and the badges and everything. And we're bringing it all together and doing that final assembly and test here. So it's, this is really, really important. Of course, process, yeah. 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 This is Harrison. He's one of our production assemblers and uh, he's currently testing the PMC-6s. So we've got the, so we're assembling a batch of PMC-6s at the moment. As, right. as they hit final assembly and they're built and uh, are ready to test, they all come through into this test booth. So. Harrison's, uh, Harrison's just doing a uh, really simple phase test. He's using the uh, 
the box there and that just makes sure that everything's been hooked up uh, and it's the correct polarity. So it's really sort of just a, a quick, quick basic, I mean, you, you know, the guys should be hooking them up the right way around, but right, you know, but you still have to we all make them. mistakes, right? Sure. So that's a nice little quick double check. That's the first thing you check for. Okay, so that's it. So once we pass, they come out of this test booth and they'll get sent right back onto those benches. Um, they'll get a final, final pass over them, make sure they're all looking great. They'll clean them and they'll put them in a box and then they'll ship them out to you guys. All right, <laughs> at the moment, and yeah, at the moment we've got a good stock holding. We've got CIs, the Pro, we're getting there. There's a lot of demand for Pro at the moment, especially in, in the States, um, but, but globally as well. We've got some, some real interest in, in that range and, and we're, we're, we're motoring to, to keep, on, keep on top of it and, and meet everyone's demands. So um, it's really exciting, uh, quite a challenge, but, um, but we're getting there. So yeah, this is kind of like where it all comes together and goes out the door and hopefully gets to the customer and, and, and everyone's happy sort of thing. So Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's great.